When I think of wise elders, I remember afternoon teas with my dear friend Dorothy Cameron. It's nearly twenty years since Dorothy entered the realm of the ancestors. The story I will tell you brings wisdom from that place. It's a story for us now, for the politics of harmony between people and Gaia, the living earth. Tucked inside it is the very creative relationship between Dorothy's love of nature, her visionary poetic mind and her life work of understanding indigenous Europeans through their art. Her scholarly work crossed most of Europe and more than a thousand generations, from the Ice Age through the beginning of agriculture and the millennia of flourishing, peaceful settlements. She showed me the way our ancestor artists encoded and passed on their knowledge of Gaia's ecological laws and spiralling rhythms. She taught me to tune into Mother Earth's vast regenerative powers in sacred images of women's life-bringing bodies, of birds and flowers, bees and trees and patterns of land and water. Tea with Dorothy often went like this. She would be preoccupied with some trouble in the world, It might well be the awful state of Australian politics and the future of the planet. We'd talk about that. She would say something like, Oh, how much we have lost. And then she would open her big imagination and the incredible library inside her mind that held thousands of symbolic images European artists made between about 30,000 and 5,000 years ago, and off we'd go. Travelling through time past, present and emerging, moving between the inner and outer worlds. Always listening, Dorothy waits upon the songs. Always in her mind, the question of how the creative evolutionary powers of women and other people will recover the mysteries of rebirth, of bringing life out of so much death. This story brings Dorothy to us from the women's place called Kurrajong, or Capitol Hill, where Parliament House stands in Nanbury, Ngunnawal country. It's 1990. She is visiting Parliament House with some other Canberra women for a regular meditation date with Jo Valentine, Australia's first Green Senator. Jo is 44 years old. Dorothy is 74. They're fond of each other. Their ethics and bookshelves are similar. The women gather in the members' hall. They circle the pool of reflection fountain. Some feel shy. Some hearts are pounding. You can close your eyes. We can join the meditation. In this circle of women, everybody is safe. In this circle of women, minds become still. Emotion falls away. Dorothy is here in the circle. Her eyes are closed. Her big imagination opens wide. The fountain becomes a spring of wild water. The bees. A chorus of crickets. The ancestors are here. Women are singing. The hill beneath us is singing.
home afterwards, Dorothy is brimming. She had grieved for the song of that hill when they removed a million tons of soil to construct the new parliament. But the hill is still singing. A poem pours out of her. At the next meeting, she reads it to the women. She gives Joe Valentine a copy. Joe is a passionate politician, but for seven years she's been a lonely voice in the Senate. The vitriol of shouting male politicians is exhausting. She misses her family in Western Australia. It's 1991 now, and Joe has decided to retire. Her valedictory address of farewell to parliamentary duties is scheduled for Thursday the 19th of December. This is a big day in Australian politics. Paul Keating topples the Prime Minister, Bob Hawke. There are long adjournments. Joe waits. Hansard reports that she starts her speech at 1.23am. Listen. She's nearing the end. Listen. Joe's introduction of the Oracle of the Singing Hill may help guide this National Congress of Women. So let your imagination open wide the way Joe's does. I'd like to read a poem by Dorothy Cameron. Dorothy is one of the people who's been coming into this building to meditate, to support me and all honourable senators in the hope that we would have more harmony in this building. Her poem is entitled, The Singing Hill. The men in dark suits with endless disputes sit in the marble temple in the shining edifice built upon the hill. They are the elders of the present day tribe, quite unaware that eons ago the hill was sacred and magic was there. For once it was the singing hill, the hill which sang the earth song at the meeting of the ley lines and the crossing of the song lines in the centre of the hills of the circling. The song of the earth was the women's song. They were the tribal elders then who knew of the mysteries, who drew down the moon and nurtured the earth and its singing. Unknown to the dark suits shouting within, the women are returning to the centre of the circling, reclaiming their own songs. Circling the fountain in the shining edifice, circling the pyramid of the thrusting dome, they return to their own, and the chanting is beginning. The humming has begun. passing of the seasons, music from the singing hill will transcend the voices of the dark suit shouting their abuse. New tribal elders, the re-emerging daughters, will awaken Gaia and the shouting will be stilled. The healing of the planet will begin. Gaia's woman energy will link the endless cosmos with the light of inner knowledge and a reverence for the earth. The daughters of a different dreaming will recover the mystery, rediscover the harmony of the centre of the circling around the singing hill.